Many union advocates say they help push businesses to make workplaces much safer. And as Bob Buckley shows us in this evening's Buckley Report, that kind of advocacy may have saved more than two dozen lives when the Imperial Foods plant in Hamlet, North Carolina, caught on fire in 1991. This was a place where working people made a decent living. This was a union town. Brian Simon has a story to tell. We're going to make Hamlet the call for, for a renewed democracy in America. It's the one that was delivered to his front porch every morning 30 years ago. I kind of remembered this story almost with a rhythm to it, and that was the rhythm of the, the Raleigh News and Observer landing on my doorstep every morning. And it continues to fuel his passion. This isn't an accident. This is a product of a certain political system and a particular social bargain that was put in place around this time that I think is built around the idea of cheap. Simon is at Teamsters Hall 391 in Greensboro, reminding anyone who will listen about the 25 souls that perished in the Imperial Foods chicken processing plant 31 years ago this month. After a while, you just get numb. You just think, how much worse can this thing get? We were in Hamlet nearly 25 years ago when the wounds were still raw. I think when you walk up and you see them on the ground laid out with sheets over them, it was the first poignant reminder I had had of, I, well, I'd never seen anything like that. But as the years pass, memory of it degrades, much like the old videotape we shot these pictures on. That this wasn't an accident. And Simon wants to prevent that. The people who worked in that plant that day were made vulnerable. His book, The Hamlet Fire, the tragic story of cheap food, cheap government, and cheap lives, makes the case that what happened at the Imperial Foods plant was almost entirely preventable. The fire itself could have happened, but the death didn't have to happen. In the 11 years that plant was doing business, it had never had a safety inspection. That is true in the least of it. That plant okay. had three fires in the 11 years before the tragic fire of 1991. And there is no evidence that the fire department, which was literally a stone's throw away, ever did an inspection. Imperial brought jobs to Hamlet about the time it seemed prosperity had taken the last train out of town. Would this have happened if unions had a better foothold in the state? Maybe, maybe not, but the, the issue is really if you would have a union in an out-of-the-way factory town. Because this is the industrial model that has been used across the country over the last 30 years, is to locate industries in small towns where you have a relative monopoly over labor and where the mayor and the city council desperately need the jobs that you provide and the bargain is not to say anything. Right. Simon admits that the North Carolina of the 1980s and 90s that was desperate to replace the textile and furniture jobs it was losing by the tens of thousands isn't the North Carolina of today, yet. The state of North Carolina did not fundamentally change its structure of factory inspections after this fire. They added some, but they didn't fundamentally change it. At the end of the day, the political culture of North Carolina was set in stone and wouldn't be changed. The site has changed. The plant has long since been torn down and a simple memorial sits in its place that Bryant Simon hopes evokes a universal emotion that people shouldn't have to die to work. A lesson sometimes harshly learned. Bob Buckley, Fox 8 News. Major